Hey guys, it's Judy here with My Life as Geek Guy. On this channel, I create videos on product reviews, makeup tutorials, and lifestyle advice with the aim to entertain, educate, and enrich the lives of others. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I would absolutely love to have you join the Geek Guy family. Today's video is going to be a bit of a long one. I haven't even started and I've already got eyeshadow all over me. I'm going to be doing my eyeshadow palette collection. There's a fair bit to go through. This does not include my Juvia's Place eyeshadows. I already have a full video dedicated to just my Juvia's Place eyeshadow palettes except for two that I have just received in the mail the Afrique and the Warrior 2 palette so these ones made it into this video I'm so freaking hot right now our bedroom feels like a sauna so grab a snack grab some popcorn in my case, grab an icy pole or anything cold. And as I gradually get more and more glowy throughout this video, it's because I am extremely, extremely hot right now. So, let's get into this video. I'm sorry if the lighting gets a little bit weird because the sun is just blazing in through the window right now. It's gonna go light, dark, light, dark. It's one extreme to the other. So the first three little eyeshadows I'm gonna be sharing with you are actually really, really old ones. The only reason I have these are for sentimental purposes. This is the first ever eyeshadow palette palette <laughs> that I ever used. This one is a little Lancome Quab that I actually stole out of my mother's makeup bag. I don't think she ever actually missed it, but this is what it looks like. This is the first ever thing I applied makeup with and I would use this as blush. I would use this on my eyelids and these two I didn't really know what to do with them. As you can see, I hit pan on the brown one. I can't believe I still have this, but this is the first ever eyeshadow palette that I ever used. And then branching out on into more makeup, I wanted to go and try different things. So I went to Chemist Warehouse and bought this little quad from Maybelline. As you can see, very, very much used up quad. I would just use that on my eyes, those two shades there. And I can't believe I still have this one. And this is the third eyeshadow palette that I ever bought. As you can see, I hit pan on all of them, except for this one. That's how much I used and loved this eyeshadow palette. This is the first ever eyeshadow palette that I used to try and create ballroom makeup with. I used the crap out of this. <laughs> the next eyeshadow palette is the BH Cosmetics Foil Eyes 20. Eight color eyeshadow palette. This one was one of the very, very first ones that I ever used on my channel. Today's video is going to be on how to create this really. Um, <laughs> that look was absolutely terrible, guys, but I remember using this and being so incredibly amazed at the pigmentation and the foiledness of this. And then now looking back, I kind of feel like this was just the beginning of glitter and shimmer shadows in the makeup industry. And this one was released about two and a half years ago, something like that. I want to swatch shadows, but I'm not going to simply because we will be here for a very, 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 very long time. The pigmentation of this one is not terrible, but it's definitely not the best one either. I think as I have been going through and trying different eyeshadow palettes in the makeup industry that have been released in the recent years, I just tend to expect more of my eyeshadow palettes because there are affordable palettes out there that actually give you better quality than what you will find in the Australian drugstore market, which is a shame because it'd be nice if Australia caught up with the quality of makeup that the rest of the world has, but I'm sure we will get there eventually. <laughs> The next one is my Z palette. This one is full of Makeup Geek eyeshadows. Makeup Geek was really, really big back in the day, and so I bought their entire collection of their duochrome eyeshadows. They're the really nice shimmery ones, and then the old OG Makeup Geek ones that Jaclyn Hill was talking about. Peach Smoothie, Cocoa Bear, Frappe, Cream Brulee. These are just the shadows that all the OG makeup artists on YouTube were talking about. So yeah, I really wanted to get in on that Makeup Geek bandwagon. This is one of the very, very first makeup items that I really invested in for myself. So this one's quite precious to me. I have a fair bit of sentimental value attached to this one, but I actually don't use it that much anymore. This one is a more recent one. This one was released around the Coachella time. I'm not quite sure if it is still available on the BH Cosmetics website, but this is the BH Cosmetics Weekend Festival Eyeshadow Palette. The pigmentation of this one is really good. When you look at it in the palette itself, it's not really super impressive. Well, to me anyway. And even when you swatch it, it doesn't feel that great. But when I applied it on my eyes, the pigmentation of this was mind-blowing. It was absolutely incredible. So it only goes to show that swatches don't really say that much. Sure, you can sometimes tell with swatches what the quality of an eyeshadow is going to be like, but sometimes you just need to apply it to your eyes to really see how it performs in real life because no one is 
wearing eyeshadow out on their arm, aren't they? <laughs> this one is the BH Cosmetics Weekend Festival Eyeshadow Palette. It's got 20 really nice vibrant colors. This pink one here has stained my eyelid, so it is very, very, very full of pigment. And I do want to do more eyeshadow looks using this palette. But as trends move on, you kind of want to try and keep up with the latest and the newest. But I know with all the newest releases coming out in the market, it's almost impossible to do that. So I might just even go back and use some old eyeshadow palettes because you know what, I have them and I want to use what I have. Moving on, I'm going to share with you now my Violet Voss eyeshadow palettes. I still have them in the packaging because I haven't actually ever used them, which I know sounds absolutely ridiculous to have them and not use them. But the reason why I kept them in the packaging is because after I bought them and a bit of time passed, I realized I wasn't actually gonna use them. So I'm going to sell these ones on and that's why I kept the boxes. So this one is a Violet Voss Drenched Metal Eyeshadow Palette. These are all shimmers in the palette and they have some really, really nice names on them. I have not swatched or touched any of these shadows so it's in actually really good condition to resell again. I bought this straight off, was it either Beauty Bay or Beauty Buys or Adore Beauty or something? So I bought this one as well as the Holy Grail palette, the Laura Lee palette, and the Ride or Die eyeshadow palette. They were really raved about back in the day, especially when Laura Lee released her eyeshadow palette in collaboration with Violet Voss. But I haven't actually used any of these eyeshadows, but they are actually really, really beautiful. I have not tried them on my eyes, so I can't really speak as to the quality of them on my eyelids. I have swatched a couple of the shades in the other palettes, but again, swatches don't really speak much for the way that they will apply on the eyelid. So that one is the Drenched Metals eyeshadow palette. This one is the Holy Grail eyeshadow palette. It's more of a warmy, burgundy tone sort of palette. This one I feel like was an ambassador for all the pinky, warm, neutral tone palettes that were to come in the future since this one has been out for a little while now. But these ones are some really, really gorgeous shades. But then again, if I was gonna use these sort of shades on my eyes, I would probably just go for my Natasha Denona Lila palette. I would probably just reach instead for one of my Morphe eyeshadow palettes. I'm trying to not destroy the box here because I wanna resell these. And the next one is the Laura Lee eyeshadow palette. Now, please don't unsubscribe from me simply because I have mentioned her eyeshadow palette on my channel. Regardless of any drama that has surrounded Laura Lee or people who hate her, the eyeshadows in this palette are actually quite beautiful, but I have not used or swatched any of them. They are quite beautiful. I think I've swatched one of these, but very, very lightly. This palette doesn't really scream out to me, use me, like some other eyeshadow palettes do. I think it's because I have always really loved bright eyeshadows and a lot of these shades in these palettes that I have just mentioned from Violet Voss are more neutral tone colors. So while they are really, really beautiful, it's not quite the color selection or the color family that I gravitate towards. And the next one is the Ride or Die Pro Palette. And this one is absolutely beautiful. While the packaging is rather bulky and it's not really something I have space for to sit on my makeup table, the eyeshadow collection in this is really, really beautiful. It reminds me of a combination of the shadows from the Laura Lee Palette and their Holy Grail Palette. It looks like they combined both color families into this one big one here. So if you're a makeup artist and you're someone who does makeup on other people, then this palette might be something that's really useful to you, especially when it has a really big mirror like that. <laughs> but yeah, again, I have not really used this eyeshadow palette. The next eyeshadow palette is the Models Prefer Saltwater Eyeshadow Palette. I have had a bit of a chance to play with this and I'm not entirely impressed with the eyeshadows in this palette. While the packaging is really, really sleek and beautiful and the shimmers are like, okay. It's not really the sort of palette that I would gravitate towards because like I said before, we are now a little bit spoiled with all the eyeshadow palettes that are so readily available to us from overseas, from America, from like places like Morphe, Juvia's Place, Makeup Geek, Colourpop. Colourpop is so, so incredibly affordable. So when I think of these eyeshadow palettes, in comparison to really affordable brands like ColourPop, then I just feel like this one is rather subpar. While the color shade and the family is absolutely beautiful, even the layout of it, it just has a really beautiful color story going on right here. The quality of the shadows themselves don't really impress me. I'm really sorry to say that because it is quite a beautiful palette. There's a really nice, beautiful big mirror in it and this would make a really nice gift if only the shadows performed as I would kind of expect them to. Especially for a palette with a price like this, this one is $20. I could buy a Juvia's Place eyeshadow palette for maybe around $23 and the quality of those eyeshadows are so much 
more better than this model's prefer eyeshadow palette. So I'm really hoping that in the next few years, the Australian drugstore makeup market will step up its game and really start to put out some good quality eyeshadow palettes. While the drugstore market here in Australia has really, really good quality as far as foundation, concealer, mascara, anything else, I'm finding that it's kind of struggling in the area of eyeshadows. They've got a fair bit of a ways to go. <laughs> The next two are from Juvia's Place. These one I just received in the mail a few days ago. This one is the Warrior 2 eyeshadow palette. I'm really looking forward to doing a makeup tutorial using this palette here. Let me just open it up. So this is what it looks like. It is a cruelty-free product designed and formulated in the USA. So this is the Warrior 2 by Juvia's Place. I'm sure you have seen this one circulating around social media. This is a palette of nine matte eyeshadows, which is actually quite interesting and different for Juvia's Place because in every single eyeshadow palette that they've released so far, have a lot of really super stunning shimmer eyeshadows in them. And yeah, this is an eyeshadow palette of full matte shape. So that's actually really, really good of them to actually release something like this. It is the second in their series of the Warrior palettes. I'm sure you've seen the Warrior 1 around on social media as well. This one is the Warrior 2. I've not even played with this yet. I want to take some photos of this before I dig into it, but I already know that I'm going to love it because the eyeshadow quality from Juvia's Place is absolutely incredible. They are actually really affordable palettes as well, so I can't complain about this at all. The next one is also from Juvia's Place. I got this in the same delivery as my Warrior 2 palette. This one is from the Afrique collection. Look how beautiful this is, guys. Look how stunning this packaging is. This is what it looks like on the inside. Uh, look, look at this. It is so incredibly beautiful. It actually has seven matte shadows and five shimmer shadows and I already know that I'm gonna love this. I want to get really, really colorful with an eyeshadow look using this. So definitely keep an eye out for me using this eyeshadow palette in a makeup tutorial. What I really, really love about Juvia's Place is that I know that their eyeshadows are definitely marketed towards people of a darker skin tone, which I actually really, really appreciate because so far, while I know that it's a touchy subject. It is quite the truth that the makeup industry so far has been totally dominated by shades and colors that are more inclined to be used by lighter skin tone people. So while I know that the market is definitely changing, it's so beautiful to see that there are makeup brands with eyeshadows that are marketed towards people of color. I'm just going through everything that's not Morphe because my Morphe pile here is freaking insane. That's my Morphe pile. Okay, moving on. Before I go into my most super expensive eyeshadow palettes, I'm going to go into probably my most cheap ones. Not cheap as in quality, but cheap as in affordable. These ones are my ColourPop eyeshadow palettes. This one is my Bretman Rock Wet and the Lit eyeshadow palettes. I have only just received this in the mail as well. Not sponsored. I bought all of these eyeshadow palettes myself. So this one is the Wet Collection. It's still in the packaging because I have not used this one yet. This one is the Wet Palette, and this is what it looks like on the inside. Absolutely beautiful. It makes me so incredibly proud to see Filipinos represented in this way in the beauty and makeup industry. And for Bretman Rock to put something out like this that really, really gives homage to our Filipino culture and background, it really makes us feel so proud. Mabuhay! Mabuhay! <laughs> So this is the Wet Collection, and this one is the Lit Eyeshadow Palette. It's still in the packaging, but I have used it on my eyes. This is what I'm wearing on my eyes today. This is what the palette looks like. Lit is in glitter. I have golden glitter everywhere now. And this is what the eyeshadows look like, but it comes off as a golden pinky shift. So that's the Wet and Lit Palettes by Bretman Rock, made in collaboration with ColourPop. This one is the ColourPop Golden State of Mind Eyeshadow Palette. And this one is all shimmers. Someone went to visit all the shining stars in the sky and took stardust off of them and then made it into an eyeshadow palette. That's kind of what this one reminds me of because every single one of the shades in this eyeshadow palette are shimmers and when you apply them wet, they just, they're like, they're just, I'm speechless. Can't describe. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. These two are Kathleen Light's eyeshadow palettes made in collaboration with ColourPop as well. 
This one is Dream Street. It has a very, very Kathleen Lights color story going on right here. What I also really love about ColourPop eyeshadow palettes is that the pans aren't huge. Well, I know I rave about Juvia's Place eyeshadow palettes, the pans are actually really, really big, which is nice. There's nothing wrong with that. But the thing is, if you're going to use an eyeshadow palette like this, because there are so many on the market, sometimes it's nice to have smaller eyeshadows because you have a better chance of actually using them up. So if you're someone who likes to use up one eyeshadow palette before you go and buy yourself another one, then ColourPop eyeshadow palettes might be a good option for you to check out because the pans are so small, you don't have to be using this for months and months and months and months and months. Well, maybe you do if you don't have time makeup every single day. You can use this or let it sit without feeling guilty because they're one, they're not too expensive, and two, the pan shades aren't huge. So if it does sit there for a couple years, then you don't have to feel bad that you let it go to waste. Does that make sense? No, that didn't make sense. This one is the Zodiac eyeshadow palette. This one was also made by Kathleen Lights in collaboration with ColourPop. I have a makeup tutorial up on my channel using every single one of the shades in this palette. It is very, very Kathleen, this color story and the names of it because she is very much into the Zodiac signs. Kathleen always comes up with the most beautiful eyeshadow palettes, you guys. I might be a little bit biased as well. <laughs> so those are my most affordable eyeshadow palettes, the ColourPop ones. Now I'm going to talk about three eyeshadow palettes that combined probably cost more than all of these eyeshadow palettes put together. Almost, maybe, actually maybe not quite, but my point is they're very, very pricey. This one is the Natasha Denona Star Eyeshadow Palette. I used the shimmery shadow in this palette in a makeup look recently that I did for my glittery holiday makeup look. And while the glittery eyeshadow is absolutely beautiful, it's not really something I would recommend using without a glitter primer, or just use the Steel and Magnificent Metals glitter eyeshadows. They probably stick better, last longer, and not end up all over your face. Natasha Denona eyeshadows are absolutely beautiful and they would kind of expect them to be for something that is priced like this one. I believe the star palette is priced to about 180 Australian dollars, which is somewhat similar to the prices of this sunset palette and the Lila eyeshadow palette. This one I haven't even used yet. This one is the star eyeshadow palette. I probably need to use this and utilize this more often on my channel because it's just so freaking expensive. Quality of Natasha Denona palettes, you cannot go wrong. I would definitely purchase another one of her eyeshadow palettes. It's just something that is definitely an investment in your makeup collection. The next one is the Natasha Denona Sunset Palette. The packaging of this is just so luxurious and beautiful. You can definitely tell it is high-end. This is some serious high-end shit right here, guys. This one, this one has a really beautiful color story going on right here as well. These ones blend beautifully. I cannot complain at all about the quality of these eyeshadows. and. I probably shouldn't have any reason to complain about the quality of these eyeshadows because I paid a lot of money for this palette. <laughs> and everything I just said about those two previous Natasha Denona eyeshadow palettes goes for this one as well. This one is the Lila palette. Look how beautiful this packaging is. It's so sleek and high-end and these are the colors in the palette. I've really only touched that shadow. Everything else is brand new and untouched. I definitely think I should make an eyeshadow tutorial using this eyeshadow palette. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to see any makeup looks using any of these eyeshadow palettes and I will definitely do that for you because I got you. I got you. Okay, we are getting through this. Last but absolutely not least, I have my Morphe eyeshadow palettes. Yep, and this isn't even all of them. That's my Morphe eyeshadow palette. So I'm just gonna start with the one on the very top and work my way down. This one is The Vault, made by Jaclyn Hill in collaboration with Morphe Brushes. I am sure you have seen this one circulating the internet because this one kind of broke the beauty community, almost kind of. <laughs> it has four eyeshadow palettes in it. I'm not gonna spend very much time on these because no doubt you have already seen these eyeshadow palettes. This one is Armed and Gorgeous. As you can see, it's got a fall color story going on right there. This one is called Ring the Alarm. It has more burgundy orange tone shades in this color family. This one is a palette called Dark Magic. This is one I absolutely love. While I don't tend to gravitate towards cooler toned eyeshadows, this one I actually really love the color story of and you can create some really gorgeous looks using this eyeshadow palette. And this one is probably my most favorite out of the four eyeshadow palettes. This one is called Bling Boss. 
and it's got some purple pinky rose golden tones in it I want to do another makeup look using this palette because I've really only used this a few times okay next one is probably my most ever of all time used eyeshadow palette even more than these three here this one is the Morphe and Kathleen Lights eyeshadow palette as you can see it is very 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 much well loved this palette I use for every occasion I use this eyeshadow palette for my wedding day I will insert a picture right here of the makeup look that I did on myself for my wedding day using this eyeshadow palette I use this for my go-to glam look when I'm in a hurry and I don't have time to think about what eyeshadow look I want to wear this is the palette I used for everyday work makeup looks when I just want a little something in my crease or a little bit of pop of color on the eye I love this eyeshadow palette no one talks about it absolutely no one talks about this palette anymore but I love it so much I wish that Morphe would bring it back because I want another one this one's destroyed this one has been used to death. Morphe, bring this one back, because Kathleen's freaking awesome. Or do another collaboration with Kathleen. Why don't you? Why don't you? These ones are the Morphe 25A and 25B palettes. These ones have actually been repackaged into palettes with round eyeshadows in them, I think. You can buy these two in bundles. This one is the 25B. This one is the 25A. While I do love the colors in these palettes, they are a little bit basic for me. As I've already mentioned before, I do like to use really bright, colorful looks on my channel when I can. I don't want to be boring and basic with my eyeshadow looks. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but because I don't apply, because I don't apply full-on makeup every single day when I do, I kind of want to like get out of my comfort zone when I apply makeup. So I don't really gravitate towards these eyeshadow palettes. They're like an early Morphe eyeshadow quality. I don't feel like these ones have the latest formulation of their eyeshadows, which is also probably contributing to the fact why I don't grab these ones very often. The shimmer ones are great, the matte ones are okay. The next eyeshadow palette is the Morphe 35R. This release of the 35R sort of just came and went. I don't know what it is about certain palettes, like the second nature palette or the 35O palette. They were sold out multiple, multiple times. And then they come out with a really beautiful palette like this one, and then it was there and then it was gone. And like no one really talked about it. But this 35R palette is actually really beautiful as well. It's got some really golden rusty sort of colors through it. Some really nice dark browns, some beautiful shimmers. These three rows are sh all shimmers as well. What I really love about these 35 shade eyeshadow palettes from Morphe is that the color schemes are absolutely beautiful. You can create any look out of these. And there are a lot of shimmer shades in here that you could really use to make any look a statement look. So this one is the 35R. This one is the 35U palette. As you can see, I have also hit pan on a few of these shadows. These ones have been very, very much well loved and used very, very early on in my makeup experimentation. Even before I had a channel when I was just doing Instagram, it's not really something I grab for anymore because my Juvia's Place eyeshadow palettes have sort of taken place in when I do want to do a really bright, colorful makeup look. I find some of the older Morphe eyeshadow palettes don't have very great pigmentation in some of the colors like these light pink ones, the yellow one, and the more browny ones in this particular palette don't have super great pigmentation. It's very, very hard to do a red. This red didn't actually come out red. It probably blended out a whole lot more pink than red, which is why I'm super excited to get my James Charles Artistry palette. That one is coming in the mail, which is why I don't have it included in this makeup collection, but I will do a full video and makeup tutorial using those palettes once they arrive in the mail. I am so excited. This one is a 35T. Now this one is the very, very first Morphe eyeshadow palette that I ever bought because I heard Kathleen like, Kathleen is the very first person that I started watching on YouTube, which is why I kind of feel like I love her so much. I have been watching her for, for a long, long time. And I bought this eyeshadow palette and got into Morphe eyeshadows because Kathleen Lights was talking about them. And I watched her video when she was talking about this 35 taupe eyeshadow palette. There are a lot of shimmers in here and a fair few matte shades. I kind of have an emotional connection with this palette simply because this was the very first Morphe palette that I ever ever bought. I feel like the formulation of this again has the old Morphe formulation. I feel like as years come by and with every single eyeshadow palette that they release, it just gets better and better. This one has newer Morphe packaging. I'm not going to hold it straight up simply because the black eyeshadow in this palette has shattered 
and that's probably the black eyeshadow that I have making my bed gray at the moment but this one is the Morphe 3502 the 3502 has a mixture of more reddish orange tone shadows I have used this one a fair bit this one used to sit on my desk in rotation I know it doesn't have very everyday shades in it but for me any color can be an everyday color <laughs> I kind of like that they have the shade colors on this little plastic thing and what I do so that I don't lose these little plastic things is I stick it to the lid if the lid doesn't have a mirror then I take that plastic thing and I double side tape it onto the lid so I don't actually lose the shade names if that makes any sense and that I don't have to keep replacing it every time I use the palette and have to take it off so that's a little tip for you if you like to keep these little plastic things because it does have the names on them. The next one is the Morphe 35B. I'm not sure if this one is still available but I'm very very sure that James Charles's palette will definitely take the place of the 35B. This one has served me faithfully throughout the years. Whenever I wanted some bright and matte shades, I would grab the Morphe 35B but this is all before I discovered Juvia's Place eyeshadows. And again because it is the old Morphe formula, I feel like some of these aren't as pigmented as they could be like this deep navy blue um, the pink shades the orange shades. some of them are actually really good these two are really good pigmentation but some of the other ones just sort of blended out into nothingness this one is the morphe 35k this one I absolutely love and still breach for a lot on my channel and especially if you watch my Halloween makeup series I use this for almost every single eyeshadow look in that series not just on my eyes but for any looks that needed shading out and highlight and things like that but as you can see the Morphe 35k has been very much been well loved and used the white eyeshadow has been hit pan on majorly <laughs> I love this white eyeshadow I would totally repurchase this palette just for the white eyeshadow itself but it's an extremely versatile palette that you can create any look with this palette cool tone smoky eyes warm tone smoky eyes with a bit of bright highlight there and black here I also use this palette for a lot of my ballroom makeup looks as well so that is the morphe 35k definitely a recommendation for me if you're looking for a palette that can do everything except for pops of color this one is the 35p palette as you can see plum shades a couple burgundy shades there a nice black shade there this one has been used a fair bit on my part when it came to the bright purple shade here but I didn't really dig into any of the other matte plain purple shades there I probably could get a whole lot more use out of this but now whenever I want to do a purple eyeshadow look I would probably just grab my bling boss eyeshadow palette or grab the Masquerade palette by Juvia's Place because that has some really vibrant purples in that palette. Again, this one has served me well but not really something that I reach for very often now. This one is the Morphe 35OS. So the 35O was the palette that kept selling out over and over and over and over and over and Morphe decided to capitalize on the fact that that palette was so popular and they created that palette again in the all shimmer version. So this one has all the shades from the 35O every single one of this is shimmer you probably couldn't create a full makeup look just using this palette unless you wanted to put shimmer in your crease which probably isn't a very good idea because that would be very flattering on you not unless you wanted to emphasize and accentuate every single line and texture on your eyelid but very very beautiful not really something that I reach for very often not unless I wanted some really nice vibrant brown shimmery colors this one is the Morphe 35 F palette I think it was the Fall Into Frost palette. This one was released a fair while back as well. There are a fair bit of shimmers in there. The only row of mattes in this palette are the ones down the very, very, very bottom here. A row of beautiful shades that you can use for transitional shades. Light to very, very dark here. I really love it when eyeshadow palettes have a black eyeshadow in it, simply because black can transform any daytime basic look into something dark, smoky, vampy, glampy, beautiful, and sexy. So I really like it when palettes have a black eyeshadow in them. Every single other shadow in here is a shimmer shadow. Very beautiful. Nothing wrong with them, I just don't reach for it very often. I think it's just because I have so many. This one is the 35O palette, the notorious 35O eyeshadow palette. Before I actually got to grab this one, I think it was restocked like six times and I just could not snag it so I gave up trying until one day a few months later on I saw a notification saying it was back in stock and still in stock and so that's when I grabbed mine and this one is the 35O palette, so beautiful, 
I think it was very popular because it was the first palette that Morphe ever released with the really warm, bright shades. And brighter, warmer toned eyeshadow looks were starting to get more into trend at that time. Something that I do use very often, this one is sort of in rotation of the palettes that I keep on my desk when I just want to reach for something quick and easy and some slap some eyeshadow in my eyes. The really good thing about the more recent Morphe eyeshadow palettes is that I feel like the mattes blend out a whole lot better and a lot smoother, very versatile. And I would definitely recommend this palette if you wanted to get something that it would last you a long time and something that you'll be able to do a whole lot of different eye looks in with it. The only thing I would say is that it doesn't have a black eyeshadow in it. It does have a really dark brown one here, but it's not the same as having a black one. I would still get the palette even though it doesn't have the black eyeshadow in it. And last but absolutely not least, I have the Jaclyn Hill Morphe eyeshadow palette right here. This is what it looks like. I'm sure you have seen this palette everywhere. I don't even need to talk about it. I, don't, I probably didn't even need to show you and you already know what I'm talking about. I have only really used this a couple times as well. It was actually a really good idea for me to do this video because pulling out every single eyeshadow palette that I own other than my Juvia's Place eyeshadows reminded me of the palettes that I have and need using. It just reminded me of how beautiful they actually are and how much more I could do with these eyeshadow looks. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's probably a really, really long one. If you want to see any makeup looks using any of these eyeshadow palettes, then just yell out, let me know in the comments down below, and I will definitely do that for you because I got you girls or guys. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe before you leave if you haven't already. I put new videos out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so be sure to turn on the notification bell if you don't want to miss any of my future uploads. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for being here. And I really appreciate it that you've chosen to spend your time here with me today. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. This is throwing out the white balance. I'm, I'm sorry if the lighting's got... Oh, it's so bright again. That whippersnipper is so loud. Actually, really, really... Oh, my God. Ooh, the sun. Oh, I'm sweating so much. Seven pellets down, another hundred to go. <laughs> the next eyeshadow palette. Eyeshadow palette. Eyeshadow palette. The Filipino. Wait, in the beauty. I have a smudge of eyeshadow on my forehead. Highlight is also sweat. <laughs> Gross. But absolutely. Shit. Jacqueline Hill Morphe and. <sighs> One is spiced mocha. No. Bronze something and spiced mocha. <laughs> something about a boy and girl or something? I don't I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs>